So one thing that has been very amusing over these last couple of days is how much I'm seeing on social media from Falcons fans and different people, and especially a lot of NFL writers about, well, they drafted Pitts in London with the fourth and the eighth overall picks and, da, 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 and they're not using them in this, that, and the other. Look, if you listen to my radio show for the last at least two years, you know, I've been preaching about the idea of build your football team from the inside and go outward. I have a very simple philosophy about football, okay? When the guy places the football down on the ground, when the referee puts the football down and spots it, okay? The closer to where that football is your great players are, the better your team is going to be. The further that your great players are away from the football, the tougher it is for you. And that's where, listen, I'm hoping that this all works itself out. This is not about Pitts is a bad player. London is a bad player. Has nothing to do with that. I think Drake London is going to be an excellent football player. I think Kyle Pitts is an excellent football player. And this is not about changing up an offensive philosophy to fit their strengths. But let's be honest. They drafted pass catcher. I told you this months ago. If you go back in the archives and the podcast, the last team that drafted two guys and, and the Lions did it three times. The Lions are the last team to draft pass catcher in the top 10 in back to back drafts. In fact, they did it three years in a row. They went three consecutive drafts of top 10 pass catchers. Where were the Lions three years later? They were an 0 and 16 football team. Now, again, not telling you that the Falcons are about to go 0 and 16. But this football team was severely deficient in a lot of areas, pass catcher being one of them. I mean, let's let's have this honest conversation. Would they have drafted Drake London if Calvin Ridley was available this year? Would they have still gone with Drake London? Let's just say that Ridley didn't get suspended and he was available this year. Would they have gone with Drake London? What would have been the philosophy? That That's... That's the part to me that's very fascinating. They would have drafted Pitts. And again, I know people said, well, they go with best available player. Okay, every GM says the same thing. They all they all say they go with the best player available. And guess what? GMs are fired every year in the NFL, okay? How many GMs are fired every year? Like a third of the league every year is fired? Okay, so that that's all great. They all say the same thing, and they all have the same idea, okay? But when you draft bums at the very top of the draft and nothing works itself out, your GM gets fired for it, right? Ask Ryan Pace. Ryan Pace is on the staff for the Falcons. Ask him how it goes when you, oh, I drafted best in this, then the other. Okay, well, he's working for the Falcons as not a GM. He's working here as a consultant. He's not a GM because he got fired. So all that sounds great. I hope this works out. But, you know, if you tell me, well, you know, our offensive line can't block in the passing game. Well, you had a chance to draft Panay Sewell. Go look at where he grades out. Go look and see if he's not one of the best young tackles in the NFL. What was the first thing? Let, let's go back in time because I've talked about this guy a thousand times on my radio show. What was the first thing that the Buccaneers drafted when they got Tom Brady? When they picked up Tom Brady, okay, brought him over. Did they go out and draft running back, wide receivers to help him out? Did they go draft a pass rusher? No. The first thing they did was they drafted Tristan Wirfs, who, by the way, they moved up one spot to go get Tristan Wirfs. They actually traded. They flipped positions with San Francisco, flipped one spot with San Francisco. They took Wirfs. The 49ers took Kinlaw. Why? Because that's where they needed their most help. Best available player. Maybe he was, but I know that that's what they needed help in. And what's it led to? I don't know. Did you see last year who was first team all NFL? Go look at the first team all NFL team from last year. Look for that name that says Tristan Wirfs across it. It's fine if you want to tell me that. And, and by the way, the other part of this that's also funny is because people are like, well, well, why did they, you know, why did they draft wide receiver if they knew? Arthur Smith was always going to run the football. Arthur Smith is not changing his philosophy. This is what he did in Tennessee. He had a quarterback that he resurrected in Tennessee with the best running back in the entire of the NFL. And they were a heavy run first team. But you know what else Tennessee was, though, too? They had done a great job of drafting offensive linemen. 
you know, the Taylor Lewans, the Jack Conklins. They did a great job of drafting those guys first. They didn't go get Arthur Smith, Tannehill, Derrick Henry, and then draft Taylor Lewan and Jack Conklin. They had those guys in place first, and then they got everybody else from there. So, look, do I agree with what the Falcons have done philosophically in the first round the last couple of years? Not a bit. And I've made that very clear. I like some of their second round picks. I like Ebba Cady. I like Troy Anderson. I'm good. I like Desmond. I told you Desmond Ritter is my favorite pick from this draft. I like what they've done with some of their other draft picks. D'Angelo Malone and this, that, and the other. You know, last year's draft is, eh, you know, pretty iffy because Jalen Mayfield's, you know, not even on the field for them right now. And I don't expect to see him back as their third round pick. So do I agree with what they've done in the first round of these couple? No, not at all. But it's not surprising. I mean, it just, it, it is what it is. If you say best available and they love these guys and all that kind of stuff. But <laughs> their offensive system, and look, even if they have, even if Desmond Ritter started today, if he started Sunday against Carolina, he's not going out and throwing it 50 times. They're not going to be a, they're, look, you're not going to like this, okay? And I know Matt Ryan just got benched for the year in this and the other. They believed that Matt Ryan was going to be, either they were going to have Deshaun Watson or they were going to have Matt Ryan. That's why they drafted what they did. They thought either we're going to have Deshaun Watson or we'll play out a year or two with Matt Ryan. And then the Deshaun Watson fiasco happened and Matt came and said, I want out of here. And he went and negotiated a deal with the Indianapolis Colts. And I understand Matt didn't play well and he got benched and he got, he deserved to get benched because their whole team stinks. Guess what? Frank Reich ain't going to come back from all of this stuff if they don't get things on track. And by the way, they're three, three and one. So it's not like that they're at one and five right now, three, three and one, and they beat the Chiefs. Oh, because Matt let him down. But anyway, they drafted the way that they did because they thought Matt was going to be here for a year or two. And Matt Ryan is not a run heavy first passer. He, he didn't get 60,000 yards in this league by always turning in hand. At times he did when he was in his first couple of years. He certainly did turn in hand off to Michael Turner, who went for 1,700 yards in his first year here. They drafted those guys thinking that Matt Ryan or Deshaun Watson were going to be their quarterbacks, not Marcus Mariota. It worked itself out that that's what this is. And they said, you know, look, because look, I believe that they knew Ridley, you know, had his issues and was going to end up getting suspended. And they wanted to have the weapons in place to get their offense on track. So I, I hope this, there's a lot of moving parts to why they did what they did. I hope it works itself out. You know, look, with all due respect, when you tell me about Kyle Pitts having a thousand yards and stuff like that, it, it is what it is, right? But let's hope that this all works itself out. Hey, don't forget, uh, we thank you for making Lock On your first listen every day. Don't forget, check out NFL Key Predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL. Locked On's local experts give you the inside scoop on the five biggest games in the NFL, including Sunday and Monday Night Football, plus event advice from the field's leading experts at Bet Online. Follow NFL key predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast from. So we'll see. I mean, listen, as we said, I hope that this works itself out. They passed on some really good players over the last couple of years that could have helped a lot of things. You look at Parsons, if you had him on defense wrecking games every week, you don't think that they would have their offensive line better figured out with Panay Sewell? because you could have played him for a couple of years at right tackle and moved him over to left tackle once you wanted to flip Jake Matthews and him around. But they did it thinking that Matt would be here for a couple of years. They didn't, or, or Deshaun Watson would be their quarterback. They didn't plan on the idea of Marcus Mariota having to be the guy that lines up at center for all of this. All right, I want to talk about my friends over at Built Bar. Listen, you know how much I love these folks over at Built Bar. We're always looking for low carb, low sugar, low calorie snacks, right? But we want the protein that comes with it. We've talked a bunch here on the show about the marshmallow, the protein infused marshmallow puffs out there. So listen, head to built.com today. Check out their wide menu of all of the different products that they have going on over there, okay? You want low calorie, low sugar, low carb, but you want high protein, 
They've got the snacks. They've got the regular protein bars. They've got the protein-infused marshmallow puffs. Check out what they have going on at Built.com today. They're always having a new flavor of the month, so try the newest flavors that they have. Get a variety pack. They sent us a variety pack of stuff. I love the berry. You know, I've talked about the s'mores before, coconut and all that. So many good different flavors there. So when you head to Built.com today and you put together your order, when you get to check out, I want you to use the promo code LOCKEDON15, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, the number one, the number five, LOCKEDON15 at checkout. You'll get 15% off your order simply by using the promo code LOCKEDON15. Head to Built.com today, put that order together, and use the promo code LOCKEDON15 to get 15% off at Built.com. <laughs> 